Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's and Paul for our celebration of the second Sunday of Lent. As we begin our celebration, let us come before our God in worship. Our gathering song is Faithful Cross. Please stand. Who shall dare to sing the praises of the gallows tree whose limbs born the carpenter of Nazareth, trees whose wood was born by him? Sing as his dear blood and spirit mingling with the air and earth make the tree a new creation recreate the universe mighty is the arm of caesar who to god's own name pretends strong the iron of still the oak that bends. Christ the empire, unlike others, all must put away the sword. Here the king becomes the servant. He who washes feet is Lord. Rising from the earth to heaven, stretch beneath the mud and stars. Terrible pain and purpose, beautiful the wooden bars, rooted in the glades of Eden, tree that shaped the saving ark, light your frail human burden, be the light undimmed by In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. My brothers and sisters, as we come this day to continue with our Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Calvary and on our way to the discovery of the cross in our life, let us place ourselves first before God's great mercy so that we might know his love, which empowers us and compels us along our journey to God. Let us kneel. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray. O oh God, you have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual insight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis. 
God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on the height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants, all nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please follow our responsorial psalm. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Even when I said, I am greatly afflicted, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? 
He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus along with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what had been seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Now our second Sunday in Lent. As I've been asking, I hope that you might remember where we left, left off last week with the gospel. And I'm asking that we simply look at the text as the text, the reading, as it is presented to us. I know we know a lot more about Jesus and a lot more around it but when we are offered a particular text on any, at any celebration, it is imperative that we take that text and eat it up and chew it up so that it becomes a part of us, so that we see that builds upon something else and that has been preceded by something else, that it all forms together as a whole but you have to take it apart to understand it first. And so what do we have today? The transfiguration of the Lord. An important one, significant one, absolutely. And so Jesus takes them up the mountain as we hear. Every time we hear up the mountain, you know that something rather extraordinary is gonna happen. That's a clue, it's a sign. Okay, and something did, he became transfigured. Now, what transfigured means is that we really don't know. We know that he becomes dazzling, he's white, 
The other gospels say other things about it. But all we know in this gospel, this one, he became white, whiter than a fuller, could make anything white. Okay, then all of a sudden we have the two significant individuals from the Old Testament, Elijah and Moses, two very important people standing next to him. So Jesus in his glory and these two as witnesses of the Old Testament are presented to these apostles of the New Testament. That's what we have, isn't it? Now, we hear a voice, don't we? A voice cries out, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Now, obviously, it's God, is it not? I mean, we can take that much from the text. If the voice is saying, this is my son, it's the Father speaking. So the Father opens the heavens, sees his son in the process of becoming transfigured, coming into his glory, has one pronouncement. Don't forget he spoke at the baptism, but we're not going to bring that in yet. We hear the text that says, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So I want to ask you a very simple question. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Each of us have to face that at one day in our life and clearly will answer it when we stand before God face to face. And I want you to be honest with yourself. Last week, what did we hear? We hear that Jesus in the desert was tempted, overcame the temptations, then he moves on and what does he say? I have to go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Now God is speaking. Are you getting it? This is my beloved son, listen to him. Who are you listening to? Who are the people that f inform your life these days? Who are the people that form your opinions these days? Is it Christ? Is it Christ? You have to answer that. Because this Lenten journey is a journey in which we examine everything about ourselves and no one and nothing gets out unscathed. Lent, that's what Lent is about. To purge ourselves so that we might become transfigured into the glory that God has in mind for us. So who are you listening to? Who has your attention? Who has all of you, your mind, your heart? I don't know. I have to answer that for myself, and that's more than a job. It's more than a full-time job. And that becomes for us, that's what the Lent is all about. That's the Lenten experience to ask ourselves, what is it that is estranging me from God the Father and myself and each other? It's always about that, to be in right relationship, to be in right relationship. And that is a life journey, is it not? A life journey. So maybe we, we, we have some kind of example from Abraham, extraordinary individual, is he not? Now if you don't know the story of Abraham, you need to go and read it. I should bring boxes of Bibles back there and make sure that everybody takes one. Maybe I'll have to do that one of these days. I'm going to do that. I'm going to have Bibles back here. I'm going to have markers in them from the stories that, that we have. That's it. That's it. I'm going to have Bibles back there. New American. That's the one we read. That's because it's the one we read on Sunday. And I will have the text that's text and verse. 
What a great idea. Thank you, Lord. Who am I listening to? Must be God. <laughs> it's the word of God. I think we ought to know it. I think we ought to have it. I think we ought to have it every day. Read the stories of those people of faith. Abraham, he's a significant individual. He is, he's the father of faith. Haven't you heard him called father of faith? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of what he did, we are able to sit here today. You think he had something to do with your life? I think so. He's significant to whom? All the Christians, of which we attempt to be one, all of the Jews, and the Muslims. Is he not father of faith? They are world religions. I think we ought to know something about them. So the scene today is what? He has his son, go take your son, give him to me. It's not really about us sacrificing the son. It's about sacrificing everything that he has, everything that he dreamed of. What was Abraham's only dream? To have his child. What did God always say? You're going to have, you know, descendants upon de descendants. And Abraham's saying, I need a kid. We're kind of practical. So he, the Lord answered that prayer. Now he has everything that he hoped for, everything that he dreamed for. And the Lord comes and says, now give it to me. What? Yeah. Now give it to me. To become the father of faith of three world religions is not an easy task. Didn't just happen. So he did. And what do we hear today? He was going to offer his son. Then word of the Lord comes and says, okay, now that I see that you would do it, you don't need to do it. Because you're faithful, this is what's going to be. Now the word is fulfilled. A rather significant event. What are you willing to offer to the Father? What are you willing to hear from God and respond to God? Everything that you've ever dreamed of? This is tough stuff, isn't it? This is no easy path. Nobody said it was easy. Did you hear easy? I'd never heard easy. So then when we begin to get that, Paul begins to get it and he says, if God is for us, who could be against us? The danger in that is that we might try to slip in that verse before we have worked for the verse. You can't capture that verse as your own until you have worked for it and made it your own. Then you can say, like Abraham, after he offered his son, if God is for me, who could be against me? But you got, you, you got to earn it first. Nobody gets it easy. There are no free spins. Sorry. No free spins. That is our reward. Union with God. And when we get there, if God is for us, who could be against us? But you have to ask the question, who are you listening to? Because that's how you get there. Who are you listening to? We listen to lots of things, lots of people. And I know that you've, I might have said it before, I got tired of listening to the voices. Now these are the voices outside of my head. I got tired of mis listening to them. And so you, some of you know that I, that I just one day, a couple, number of months ago, a year ago, I just ripped the cable out of my house, out of the rectory. I stood outside, pulled, literally pulled the wire out, disconnected it on the TV, pulled it out, laid it on the ground, called the Comcast, said, come get your wire. I haven't watched TV in months. I read the paper. I hear you know, the news of what's going on. I am not overwhelmed by the nonsense that this culture presents to us. Don't listen to them, because when you, when you are appearing before the Father, the Father was going to say, did you listen to him? No, no, but I listened to this channel, and I listened to this guy. This guy's really good. God's Father's going to say, did you, listen to, did you listen to him? 
Well, no, I was listening to these other people. Never got to him, but I could tell you what these other ones are saying and how they're, and how they're slicing each other up. The Lord will say to you, they're my children. They're all my children. What makes you so good and great to, de to, 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 to destroy my own creation? They will appear before me on their own. You, you don't need to be in their business. I have found when I am working on my own journey, I don't have time for any other bullcrap. I really don't. I'm not saying that I'm a hero. I'm saying that I'm, I'm working at this stuff. And I pray just like you. Don't be distracted by the voices that don't matter. At the end of the day, do they bring you salvation? Do they give you grace? Do they give you reconciliation? If they do all of those wonderful things, why are we killing each other? At least verbally. And you know we've done it physically. You listen into those voices, just ask him. The Lord said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him and you will find your way. Then you'll know what Paul's talking about. Then you'll know what it means to be transfigured. Because at this per particular moment, what were the disciples? What were those apostles saying? They were so terrified. They knew Jesus best and they were terrified to see what's going to happen to him. Because they still weren't grasping it. So what did he say? Well, let's, let's, let's build something here. No, I don't want a building. I want you. That's what Jesus would be saying, right? I don't want a building. I don't want a tent. I want you. I want you to internalize it. Don't go talk about it until you've made it your own. Isn't that what the Lord said? Don't go yapping about it yet because those people have to experience it for themselves. Then you could talk about it as a community when we all are on the same page listening to him. That's what it means to be an individual standing in Christ and that is the foundation to a community of God. That's what these days are about. So last week Jesus is saying, I have to go out and talk about the kingdom of God God is saying, listen to him. You think we should? Just a thought. Follow the Sundays. I swear to God, if I can get them here next week, we'll have Bibles. It'll be a gift. It's that important. It means that much. You need to know the stories, the whole story. Let us pray to God that we will learn to live the story one story at a time and we'll begin with yours. Together, let us profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His, His only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the boundless mercies of our God, let us now open our hearts in these <clears throat> prayers of petition. For missionaries and caregivers who serve abroad and at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of industry, may they be conscientious stewards of the earth's resources, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing a crisis of faith, may they be inspired by Abraham's witness of faith in God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are facing mountains of doubt or anxiety, may they gain knowledge and assurance through scripture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this church community and the challenges we face, especially those who feel lack of gifts to share time and talent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joseph Popolowski, Michael and Mark McGivney, Henry Kabowski, Cecilia Kobleski, and for all whose salvation is known to God alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those hospitalized, the intentions in our parish intention book, and the intentions held in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, as we open our hearts before you, we trust that you will continue to strengthen and guide us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray with me, my friends, that this our sacrifice and each of our daily sacrifices may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good laws, holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord our God, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and in mind for the great celebration of the Paschal Feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after Jesus had told his disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, Jesus manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads always to the glory of the resurrection. And so with powers of heaven, 
we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we now acclaim. God and Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. Jesus himself is the word that brings salvation. Jesus is the hand that you extend to sinners. Jesus is the way by which your peace is offered to us all. When we ourselves had turned away from you because of our pride, you brought us back to be reconciled, O God, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating this great reconciliation which Christ has brought us, we now entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we now fulfill when we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as Jesus reclined at supper, he himself took the bread into his sacred hands and giving you thanks, Jesus said the blessing, broke the bread, and Jesus gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his sacred hands. Confessing your mercy, Jesus gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has left us this pledge of his eternal love, we now offer you, Almighty God and Father, what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrament and the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his 
very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us always in communion with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all your, your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at this, the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race, creed, and tongue who have died in your mercy. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As we process to the table of the Lord, our communion song is Beyond the Days. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed, and in a longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you day by day. steps of our journey. May your presence be felt in the whisper of your voice. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed, and in a of our hearts beyond the days of hope and mystery we see a light of faith renewed and in our longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you day by day in your touch of your guidance. Keep us safe in your care. May your gentleness be there. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed. And in our of our lives beyond the days of hope and mystery we see a light of faith renewed and in our longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you day steps of our journey. May your presence be felt in the whisper of your voice. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, see a light of faith renewed, and in our love of our hearts beyond the day 
gentleness be there. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed, and in our longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you day by day, to walk with you day by day. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still here on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that on um, Fridays we have stations right after the 1215 Mass and 7 o'clock in the evening. Sacrament of Reconciliation every Monday um, right here at uh, 5.30 till 7. So please take a moment in one of those Mondays to celebrate the sacrament, okay? I think that's it for now. And we'll have scripture next week. How about that? Jeez. <laughs> no, we're not going to Google anything. We're going to have it right in our hand. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. Keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty Jesus showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. May Almighty God bless you. It was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As, we, as we are sent forth to live the gospel message, please join in our sudden recessional song, Ashes. We rise again from ashes, from the good we fail to do. We rise again from ashes to create ourselves anew. If all our world is ashes, then must our lives be Yeah.